Would like to lead off this evening's video with a quick shout out to the Patriot Nurse. In about a month or so from now, around the end of September, she is going to be offering her in-person medical prep boot camp series up in Knoxville, Tennessee. Now, more so than at any other time in history, I think everyone needs to take advantage of this kind of training because we're going to be facing something very soon in this country that is going to leave society in a state where I just don't think it's going to be possible to avail ourselves of all of the easy access medical treatments that we have now. And even so, what's out there now, and you can listen to her talk about this more at length at her channel, medical treatments have changed. Getting good, sound medical advice is not something you're always guaranteed, but with her, you always are. Now, real quick, in her own words from five days ago, and this is, of course, from her Patreon channel, join me in Knoxville, Tennessee. Beyond excited to announce that their upcoming in-person classes in Knoxville, just around the corner, uh, Medical Prep Boot Camp 2024, Comprehensive Once-A-Year Experience, Medical Prep 101, 201, 301, and her new Herbal Theory and preparation into one immersive journey. You can get the entire package. And it's a month out. It gives you time to prepare and get ready and get everything squared away. Would highly, highly recommend doing this. And I know I talk a lot about Battlefield of the Mind. But these two things actually tie in together now. Florida Maki, wait a minute. How are you going to tie in medical knowledge with psychological training? Well... It's kind of the idea of why were there ever apothecaries and doctors to begin with? How did they work their way into society? But real quick, if you'd like to join us, Florida Maquis Patreon channel, Patriot Nurse has one as well. There's no law that says you can't sign up for both. One US dollar per month, even less if you sign up for an entire year, fully refundable first 90 days, no questions asked. How did that ever come about? Was it a profitable thing? You see, in the olden times when they got together and people lived in villages, everybody had a role to play. And getting rich and making a whole bunch of money wasn't always the number one concern like it is now in the country we live in. Everything now is about how can I get rich? It didn't always used to be so. You see, having somebody like a, an apothecary or somebody who knew how to use herbs, having somebody like that around was a huge asset. And it wasn't always about money. Someone like this could prepare all sorts of different uh, treatments and liniments and different ways of ameliorating everyday problems. And in exchange for that, a person like this could probably walk into a, a local bread maker and they would just hand her a loaf of bread. No money needed to be exchanged. Probably could walk into a cobbler and say, hey, I, you know, these shoes are getting kind of worn out. Can you do something for me? And absolutely. And in exchange, people would go to her and there would be this, um, I guess the proper word for this, would, I guess, be bartering without actually always an exchange that was equal. Like a pair of shoes takes a long time to take, but, you know, if you have a toothache, is it worth a pair of shoes? You know, or if you've, you know, cut yourself open and you need to have it sewed up and get something to make sure it doesn't get infected, you know, is that worth a loaf of bread, two loaves of bread, half a pound of meat? What's it worth? It was never really about always trying to come out on the profitable side of everything. But it did allow for independence, didn't it? And that's kind of the tie-in. See, we live in a society now where everybody is so far apart. Something like a Patreon is really a digital village. There are people that bring everything to the table, and there's an exchange of value. And believe me, having in-person classes with the Patriot Nurse 
And learning this directly from her is going to be something that you'll take that away and you'll have a value for that the rest of your life. And it could save you 10, 20, 30 times the cost of it. And believe me, now it might actually be more about just having the availability for it and not even be about the money. She told a story on one of her videos a long time ago that really stuck with me. And I've talked about it before because right now there's a big discussion talking about price controls and talking about how how is Trump going to fix the economy? How is Kamala going to fix the economy? She told this story and she was talking to her grandfather about a time long, long ago when people took care of each other when there was no profit motive in it. He talked about going out and picking tomatoes, picking blackberries, eggs, kerosene. And the only money was this little $8 a month pension that came in. And that was just used for, you know, exchange purposes. That was the whole purpose of currency. It wasn't about wealth. It was just for ease of exchange. You see, we think of a medieval village, village pardon me, and we think of a picture in our mind like this very peaceful and tranquil, but there were also other kinds of villages or maybe even the other side of the same village. And they used gold and they used currencies to trade in other things. And that's kind of what's being confused today between the free market and the black market. If I showed you a pile of gold like this, a lot of people would be like, wow, that's great. How do you know every one of these pieces of gold is real? Great way to make a profit is to mix in a bunch of fakes with a few real pieces, isn't it? Caveat emptor. Capitalism versus socialism. Because believe it or not, the ideas behind having an apothecary and a baker and a cobbler and a blacksmith and all of them exchanging goods and services amongst themselves as needed, as needed, was more socialist than anything else. It definitely wasn't capitalist because in many cases no money was being exchanged. But Florida Maki, don't you know price controls don't work? It's all about how you couch the term. We have them in this country right now. We have a great many price controls that are already in place. Wait, Florida Maquis, there are no price controls. We live in a free market. There are all sorts of price controls. See, what we knew and we have forgotten back in World War II is that you have to get rid of, you have to do two things at once. You have to have price ceilings and price floors. And you have to get rid of black markets. You have to have ration stamps. Are you talking like food stamps, monkey? Food stamps, what we know to be food stamps now, are not what they used to be. Food stamps weren't worth anything in the sense of a currency. You had to have the ability to pay for something that had a price control on it by having both the money and having a ration stamp for it. But how does that fix anything, Mucky? Well, if you can't buy something, regardless of how much money you have, if you don't have a stamp for it, that gets rid of the people who would run everything out that everybody needs. That's the big problem with price controls only. If you put price controls only on things without the idea of the ration stamp, then yes, you'll have all sorts of problems. Things will get run out and there'll be runs on things and there'll be empty shelves. That I agree with without the ration part of it. You see, we knew this. We knew this a long time ago and we forgot about it. And it's actually part of the story that you'll hear the Patriot nurse tell when she is talking to her grandfather, who has now, God rest his soul, passed on, he talked about having a shoe stamp issued by the government. 
Now, that stamp by itself wouldn't buy a pair of shoes. You had to have the money to pay for the shoes. But the cost of the shoes, the price of it, there was a ceiling. And if you had your stamp and you had the money, you could go get that pair of shoes for that price. Well, his apparently, if I remember the story correctly, the Patriot nurse's grandfather's uncle sold his shoe stamp on the black market for money because apparently there wasn't a need. I'm not exactly sure what the motivation was. But it's an interesting story because we did this in this country and it didn't destroy everything. In fact, we did this and it led to a huge increase in wealth and prosperity and everybody did very very well this is a real united states of america office of price administration a war price and rationing board it showed the most you could charge for you know any one particular thing now you can't do this for everything but you can do it for basic needs Plotomaki, you said we already had it, though. We already had that. We do. They're called price gouging laws. This is Ken Paxton, Attorney General of Texas. How to spot and report price gouging. He's got his whole page dedicated to it. In Florida, it's a huge, big, it's a huge deal down here. Because it goes out, well, Florida Maki, aren't you talking about during hurricanes? Aren't you talking about like when there's an emergency? Well, starving people in homeless camps. Thousands and thousands and tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands. Is that not an emergency? Shouldn't we be doing something about that? And I think it's strange. And tell me if I'm wrong here. Why do we have the ability to intervene in big pharma when we perceive that they're charging way too much for something that is allegedly needed by the public? What was that guy's name? Sam Bankman? Bankman Freed? Or he, no, he was the uh, he was the crypto guy. There was another guy who figured out a way to charge a, a ton of money for a certain drug, and he went to jail for it. I'm trying to remember the guy's name. But we intervene all the time, government wise, in the free market when it comes to big pharma, and. Has it caused a collapse in the pharmaceutical industry? See, here's the, here's the crux of how things are going to come down at the grocery store. Things are going to come down at the grocery store when there's no longer a profit motive in keeping things high. You see, you ask a kid, a child, what's the mission of a grocery store? A child would say, well, to make sure people have groceries. But what do we know as adults? The mission of the grocery store is only to provide groceries in as much as it makes the grocery store owner rich. Because if it comes down to him being rich or you having what you need, if he can't get rich off you doing it, shopping at his store, he'll close the store. That's capitalism. That's how that works. And believe it or not, it's actually illegal in many places to sell things below cost. All over the place, this is the case. Why is it illegal to sell gasoline too cheap? You can't undercut, sell below cost to drive your competition out of business and then jack up the price later to recover the cost. But wait, is, isn't that how business works, Mucky? I thought we lived in a free market. Nope. You live in a socialist country that has just kind of forgotten some of the lessons of the past. For example, and I think this is a great illustrator when it comes to a big thing that people are worried about, the cost of groceries. Built into the price of every bag of groceries is the taxes that the grocery store owner has to pay. 
He has to allow for that in his markup. So who controls taxes? The government does. So indirectly, the government is in control of what that grocery store owner charges. If they raise taxes on the grocery store, your price goes up. But the funny part is, if they lower the taxes on the grocery store, it's very unlikely that you're going to see a break in the price. And this is probably the reason Kamala Harris is going to win. Because people are going to figure this out. Florida Maquis, Florida Maquis, it is really, truly, the price of energy that has caused the price of everything else to go up. Because the price of gasoline is, and transportation costs are tied to everything. That's true. But you can't control the drilling, shipping, storing, refining, buying, selling, trading, and taxing of oil. And then say you don't control oil prices. Which the U.S. government does. But what about Venezuela, Maki? What about Venezuela? Here's a picture from Reuters. It's supposed to be a picture that shows looting. That there was a you know truck that showed up and they had groceries and everybody ran in there and it was mayhem. And as you can see, everything's on the floor. But if you look closely at the picture, and I'll give you a minute to screenshot it, you'll notice that some of the shelves are still stocked perfectly neatly, all faced forward, all full front to back. And there's only certain areas where a few things have been tossed onto the floor, a few bags open and emptied all over the place. And it's all dark and the lights are off. You see, this is a staged photo. This is a staged propaganda photo by Reuters to make you believe something happened that didn't. There was no riot here. There was no run on the groceries here. All they did is they went into a normal grocery store before or after it was open. They created this scene, opened a few bags, tossed them everywhere, pushed a bunch of stuff onto the ground, took a picture, and then cleaned everything up knowing that nobody would look all that close at it. This is another staged photo from Reuters. On the right, what you're looking at is an area of the grocery store that they had cleaned the items out of to do a shelf reset. How many of you have gone into a grocery store, a Publix, a Winn-Dixie, an Aldi, and you're walking around and you're like, wait a minute, I've been shopping here for years. My favorite item used to be on the third shelf about halfway down, and now it's on the fourth shelf a quarter of the way down. They do this all the time. See, the picture on the left is the same grocery store. Just a few aisles over. Staged photos. But of course, when BuzzFeed News picks it up and makes it a headline, people don't look into it. They don't think about things critically and logically. So I guess I'll leave here at almost 20 minutes with that idea. Would you like to go back to a time when people could trust each other and provide for the community as needed? Many people have speculated and theorized and wargamed about a survival group. A survival group, a zombie apocalypse. You know, we're going to have to have all sorts of skills. I mean, everyone's going to have to have basic skills, but we're going to have to have people with specific skills. Would the apothecary, the nurse, would she be just as entitled to that, you know, evening meal as the person who stood guard that day? Or the person who gathered wood that day? Or whatever other duties, the person, the guys who went out on the foraging missions. Of course, 
But when you say that, when you say that, no matter how small the society is, even if it's just a tiny little village, that regardless of, of what your contribution is, your contribution is just as worthy and just as noble as everyone else's, guess what that is? Hint, hint. It's not capitalism. It's not. And believe it or not, even, even St. Augustine, a very devout, very humble man, said that we have to have elements, necessary elements that are somewhat evil in society as a release, as a relief valve for society. As much as you may want to get rid of all of the vice in society, you have to have them. Because without them, society will turn into a pressure cooker. Think about this clearly for just a minute. How would you know? I mean, unless you're an expert in metallurgy, if someone gave you a giant pile of random stacks of things that looked like gold, how would you know? See, back then, there were no government certificates, were there? A lot of people say, gold has never been worth zero. Gold is the way to go. Silver is the way to go. The only reason you believe in gold and silver now is because of government certified labels and certificates on the gold. So what is your faith really in? The gold or the government? Make you think, won't it? It'll make you think, won't it? Capitalism versus socialism. The digital village that we all live in, where everyone is worthy. Love to have you. I'm sure she would definitely love the support. Definitely, if you have the ability, you've got a month. It's the end of September. Get signed up. Take the trip up to Knoxville. It'll definitely be worth it. Battlefield of the Mine, one U.S. dollar. That's it. One dollar a month. And it's refundable. First 90 days, no questions asked. God bless. Pray for each other. Pray for me. I'll pray for you. Lift each other up. Like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.